Hey everyone, this is the video that so many of you have been requesting and so many comments. This is the video about how to use your left hand on a piano or a keyboard. I also created a PDF for you guys with some of my favorite bread and butter left hand piano voicings. And you can download that PDF right now completely for free. And the link is down in the description below. So before we dive into the left hand stuff, for those of you who asked about Skype lessons, you can reach me at Ruslan Piano on Instagram or facebook.com slash Ruslan Music, or you can comment here and I'll reach out to you myself. So let's get into it. Left hand, what do you do with it? Which notes should you play? Which chord voicings? Which rhythms? How do you combine both hands? Well, we're gonna cover all of that right now. So, when I think of left hand, I think of three main parameters. Number one, what notes to play? What chords, right? Like, how do we know what voicings to use for our left hand when we're improvising with our right hand? So that's parameter number one. Once you have that figured out, parameter number two comes in, and that is which rhythms to use. Should I play whole notes in my left hand? Should I play quarter notes? Which rhythms? So you have to figure that out, and we will. And then you start playing with both of your hands, and you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, I don't have any hand independence. What do I do about hand independence? And how do I get both hands doing their job, not at the expense of one another? How do I get that independence? So that's the third parameter. We're going to talk about all three right now in this video. So let's start from the beginning. Parameter number one. How do we find these chord voicings we need to play in our left hand when our right hand is improvising? So first of all, I gave you guys a bunch of bread and butter chords in that free PDF. Go ahead and click on the link and download it and start practicing. So there are a couple things to keep in mind regarding the subject of what chords to play. There's a couple of key concepts. Concept number one, rootless voicings. Rootless voicings means voicings that don't have the root note in them. What do I mean? If you ask most people to play a C major 7 chord, they'll do this. C major 7. But if there's a bass player playing with you, right? Like right here. So you have to find some kind of voicing that sounds great that doesn't have the root in it because the bass player is playing the root. So like a voicing I often go to is this. Sounds weird, right? But listen to it when the bass player is playing the bass, like this. Right? All of a sudden, it doesn't sound that weird anymore. It actually sounds awesome. And it's not surprising that it sounds awesome, because look at this voicing. It's a C voicing. There's an E note in it, A note, and a D. It's a 3, 6, and 9. Those are really important degrees in the chord. And then the bass player is playing the 1. And we get this. For most people, this is not a C major. But for me, it is for reasons that I explained. Think how the chord is gonna ring when the bass player is playing, because eventually he will be playing. Let's try another example. Let's say A minor, right? If you ask most people what's A minor, A minor nine, they'll give you this. Right? And they wouldn't be wrong, except we have a bass player playing the root. And what am I gonna play in my left hand? I'm gonna play a rootless voicing, something like this. Sounds weird, but if the bass player is playing with it, then it sounds like this. See, all of a sudden it sounds nice. And why not? It's the ninth, it's the third, and the fifth. It's a nice and dense voicing. But you wouldn't necessarily think of it as A minor. And yet, in the world of left-hand rootless voicings, it is A minor. So these voicings are endless and you can get a bunch of them on my free PDF. But the point here is keep in mind rootless voicings. Don't play the root. Look out for those rootless voicings. Find those rootless voicings. They're literally endless. I can show you a couple in this video. I showed you a bunch in the PDF. You will discover a bunch more over the course of your life. The voicings are rootless. And because of that, at first glance, they might not even seem like what they actually are just as this didn't seem as a C chord, did it? Until the bass player played the note C in the bass, and then all of a sudden it did seem like a C chord. 
So keep that in mind. It's a little misleading. Okay, so we're still with the first parameter of what chords to play and what notes to use in my left hand. And we just covered rootless voicings. The next thing we have to cover in that parameter is voice leading. When I'm playing with my left hand and my right hand is improvising, I always make sure to voice lead the chords in my left hand so that it's all close, nice and tight and neat right here and not jumpy like this, right? It's all here. See, I'm voice leading everything. So if I have an F chord going to B flat, I'm not gonna do this. Right? I'll do this. You see? And here's the, with the bass. Or for instance, A minor to D7. Do you see what I'm accomplishing here? I'm playing rootless voicings and they are voice led into one another nicely. So that's two things to keep in mind, rootless voicings and voice leading. And here's an example for you of what that sounds like in real life. Again, this is a huge subject and there's a lot more that could be said about that. But these are the fundamental basic things to keep in mind. Rootless voicings and voice leading. So now that we have some voicings under our fingers, let's talk about some rhythms. Suppose you know what voicings to play, but what rhythms are you going to use to play them? Are you going to play them as like whole notes or half notes? I'm going to show you what rhythms to use. But first, I want to give you the secret source of left hand rhythms. And that source is the snare drum rhythms of a drummer. That's right. When a drummer is playing a swing beat, whatever he's playing on his snare drum, those rhythms are exactly the rhythms that we need for our left hand. And you can just take those rhythms and transfer them directly to your left hand. So that's for inspiration, but how do you actually practice the rhythms you're going to play with your left hand even when you have some voicings? Well, the first thing I recommend is starting with just playing whole notes with the voicings that you like. Something like this. Then you can also do it in half notes, like this. And then you can start experimenting with syncopated riffs inspired by the snare drum rhythms. And I'm going to play a couple of those riffs right now in the next example.
another concept and what rhythms to play with your left hand is a concept of framing. Your left hand can be framing the right hand's improvisation. Think of the right hand as the picture and of the left hand as the frame for the picture. And without talking about it too much, I'm going to demonstrate what framing sounds like. Check out the relationship between my right hand and my left hand and how one completes the other and frames the other. So yeah, that's a little bit about what rhythms you can be playing with your left hand. And the last thing we have to cover is independence. How do you make both hands work at the same time and not at the expense of one another, right? You want them to be completely independent. How do you practice that at all? Well, you can start by playing whole notes in the left hand and improvising with the right hand, like this. Then you can continue by playing half notes with the left hand and improvising with your right hand, like this. And then the third thing you can do is take some of those riffs you were playing before and try to improvise over some of those riffs with your right hand. It might be a little tricky, so start slow until you get super comfortable. Something like this. So as you can see, the left hand is a huge topic and there's a lot of ground to cover there. But this video is going to send you in the right direction in beginning your journey with improving your left hand and exploring some of the options available to you there. And don't forget to download my free PDF with some of my favorite bread and butter left hand voicings that you can apply directly to the exercises that we went over in this video. There really needs to be a book about left hand and I think I'm gonna write it. But for now, this should be a pretty good start. That's about it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I make a lot of content like this. So if you like this kind of stuff, hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more coming. If you're already a subscriber, go ahead and hit that notification bell so that when I release these videos, you'll be the first to know. I reply to every single comment personally and coach you guys on how to make the most of these videos. Though, to be honest, this is becoming increasingly difficult to do because I now get about 100 new subscribers every day. So imagine how that translates into comments. But I'm staying strong and responding to every single comment I get, at least for now. So let me know if you have any questions or requests, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.